about some of these challenges. I mean, OT ICS environments are different, right? They're sensitive, right? We can't just, you know, we have a threat, we have a, a, an issue, some sort of attack. We can't just go and shut systems off or reboot them, right? Uh, we need visibility across these devices, right? It's not the same as on an IT environment, right? Where we maybe have a little bit more concentric or, or consolidated network or systems that work together. A lot of times on our OT or ICS systems, they're very segmented or separate systems, even from different vendors uh, that sometimes work together or don't work together. So having that visibility across your entire site is really, really important. In a lot of facilities these days, a lot of organizations, that includes IT and OT, both of them together. Uh, there's time consuming processes out there, a lot of procedures to track these things, change management, you name it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's challenging, right. To, um, to not point back to the topic, right. What does this lead to? This leads to just actionable learning and relevant threats, right? We need real data. A lot of the information we're getting from some of these tools, from some of the technology is not actionable, right? There are things that require a lot of vetting out or a lot of additional research or analysis to do. Um, and then, yeah, it, let's not even focus too much because we wouldn't have enough time, but all the ever-changing uh, security requirements and compliance requirements and mandates and regulations and recommendations from the government out there, it's, it's a handful, right? All of these challenges that we face all of them hurt and affect negatively our MTTD and our MTTR, which we're going to talk a lot about today, which is our mean time to detect a threat or detect an issue in our environment. And then that mean time to respond and actually stop or halt or control uh, that action that's in our environment that we do not want there. So now that we've kind of defined what our challenges are, how are we actually addressing these today? What are existing approaches? And this is really what we want to drive in and goes directly to what Daniel was saying a little bit ago about the adoption of AI and how AI can really help and automate these tasks. So we look at our existing approaches, things like preventative measures, you know, CD tracking, asset inventory. These are things that we like to refer to as these are the daily vitamins, right? These are things that you need to be doing every single day, and they should be taking a little bit of your activity from your time, right? To do each day. These things, these existing approaches are massive time consuming tasks for a lot of organizations out there, right? So it takes us away from other approaches or other actions that we could be taking. Um, above and beyond that, right? The approach that we take today is based off of the interface of compromise. That requires, you know, a sacrificial lamp in our environment. Some facility has to be attacked, has to be compromised for us to learn how that attack happened. And then we put that technology in the indicator of compromise platform to detect it moving forward. So it's not the best approach. It's very reactive, but above and beyond that, it doesn't give us any visibility for maybe an insider threat or some sort of new novel attack uh, that we've never seen before. Uh, it just misses the mark there. And intelligence sharing is valuable as well. It's nice to know what type of attacks and other things that we're seeing across other sectors, but that is a slow process as well. And again, it's a reactive process. Um, and lastly, we'll talk about the siloed OT tools and protection. And we hit on that just briefly before, but we're starting to see a lot more OT, IT environments working together uh, and having tools that can be used across different groups and across different systems uh, can be extremely, extremely valuable. Now is our existing approaches. Let's really kind of drive home what our pre or post AI implementation is going to be. So those pre AI implementations that we just mentioned, that's kind of the whack-a-mole approach, right? That's kind of the way we look at that is they're things that never go away. They're tasks, like I mentioned, daily items that should be small, simple, quick actions that you take every day actually end up taking a lot more time. When you leverage something like artificial intelligence, when your post implementation with AI we're actually leveraging it to automate a lot of that work for us. So that means passively or even actively updating our asset inventory. So we're listening to all the network traffic. We're automatically using what we've learned from the network traffic to populate and update our inventory, not just for simplistic details like IPs, MAC address, and host names, but when we leverage sophisticated self learning AI, it can learn from what it sees. So we can automatically classify or tag uh, or notate specific types of assets with the function that they perform. If we see a, a specific device is performing functions like a PLC, it's sending commands to and from, uh, like an HMI or devices like this, we can tag, we can uh, place the appropriate uh, uh, labels and, and notifications on those systems. So it saves a massive amount of time. Above and beyond, we talk about CVEs. There are a lot of tools out there that can help automate CVEs, but leveraging AI takes it again to a whole nother level. Without a tool like this, you're manually assessing your CVEs. You're getting a notification, maybe from CISA. I'm sure a lot of us get those notifications. You're looking through those and you have to say, hey, do I have these devices 
in my environment. Not only do I have these devices, do I have the specific firmware or the software version that is actually applicable or exploitable uh, with the vulnerability? So it's a quite a time consuming process. Leveraging AI to automate that in conjunction with the asset inventory is, uh, is a very, very, very huge beneficial impact uh, for clients that start leveraging that. Above and beyond that, the anomaly detection piece. So leveraging AI to learn that network traffic. Again, if we're learning the network traffic, there's a lot more sophisticated things we can do. We can't just look for things that we see as bad. We're learning the environment so we can see things that are anomalous or that are different. And that's going to bring down a lot of the false positives and the noise. And that's going to bring up the accuracy of alerts that we see, including things like insider threat or novel attacks that are very, very difficult or impossible to detect with indicator of compromised platforms. Mm -hmm.